Hi guys, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, I'm gonna be talking today about uh, what you call it. They call it credit losses. Okay. Okay, the credit loss, right? Credit loss is an expense account, right? What you have to understand about it, remember, I'm just going to try to say it in another way, which is not the Oxford and things that you are reading when you see the textbook. Credit losses, they usually use this word, credit losses, or sometimes they use bad debts. So the moment they use these two words interchangeably, a lot of people get confused, right? So if you see the word credit losses, all they're trying to say is you, as the business, business A, you gave credit to someone, right? In the hope that the person is going to pay back what they owe you and they pay it back with interest. But that didn't happen because the person that you owed you, you gave credit to, didn't pay back. So because they didn't pay back, it became a loss. That's my own understanding of how they came about to having this word credit losses. Right? The same way with the name bad debts. Right? You gave away debt or you allowed someone to have debt with your organization, to be debted or indebted to your organization. Then the person that you allowed cannot pay you back. So that debt became bad. So I don't even know how you're going to understand it either or. In my own opinion, either or. But usually, just use the terminology credit losses. So what happens with credit losses? Credit losses are recognized in a business as an expense. Right? As an expense. What does an expense do? We know almost an expense, it increases on the debit side. It is a credit side. I'm not saying an expense decreases. Please, we don't decrease expenses, but we close them off. It's closed off on the credit side. And expenses are always closed off in what they call the profit or loss account. If I find time, I'll make a video for you about the profit or loss account. So if we now have someone who has a debtor, so we have a debtor's control, right? I hope you can see. We have a debtor's control, right? Then debtor X, right, owes us 10,000, 1,000 rand, right? Then all of a sudden, data X can't pay, which, which means we have to move this thousand and bring it to the credit side, creating what is called a credit loss. Because it's now a credit loss. Miss. Credit loss of a thousand. Right? Now that we have a credit loss of a thousand, this one thousand is then moved and put in this account here on the debit side. And where is it coming from? It's coming from the debtor's control account. So basically, at the end of the year, year end transactions, we then close it off to the profit or loss account, which means you try you try to transfer it to the side. That will be the end of that transaction, right? So you have to understand credit loss is an expense to the business, and it increases on the debit side it is closed off on the credit side closed off we finish about it we don't stay with it for more than one year incomes and expenses they are closed off they are not decreased or carried over to the next year so it might happen in the business that because our business offers credit right they usually then tend to come up with this account because remember in accounting they say we have to be prudent and prudence will tell us uh, if we offer credit, uh, say of 100,000, we have to make provision that of this 100,000, probably 10% might not pay. You understand? Probably 10% of these 100,000 customers are not going to pay. And that 10% now, that is what brings rise to an account that they call allowance. For bad debts, some some they call it allowance for credit losses. 
So depending on where you where you viewing this channel, this this video from, you you have to tell me. You have to now choose which how they treat it in your book. Is it bad debts? Is it credit losses? Remember, my job is just to help you understand. And I'm not so artistic, so my line might be straight, but when I'm looking at it, it is very very much straight. It might be skew, but don't mind that. When you have a thing which is called an allowance for credit loss, ah, oh, this might be a long video. When you have a thing called an allowance for credit loss, this is one thing that you have to understand. This account is a balance sheet account. That's the first thing. Balance sheet account meaning you're going to find it in the statement of uh, financial position. Statement of financial position of the company. And how do we recognize allowance for credit losses or allowance for bad debts? We recognize it as a negative asset. It's recognized as a negative asset account. As a negative asset account, what does it mean? Yo, you're throwing big terms and wara wara. You said you're going to simplify things and what what. I'm simplifying. A negative asset simply means it doesn't operate the same way an asset would do. Where an asset would increase on the debit side, a negative asset is going to increase on the credit side. Right? Where an asset would decrease on the credit side, a negative asset is going to come and uh, decrease on the debit side. So it behaves opposite. Right? What a normal asset would do, a negative asset account does the opposite. So allowance for bad debts is now called uh, a negative, is, is what's called a negative asset because it behaves vice versa. If the asset is going this direction, it goes this one. If it's going this one, it goes this one. It keeps going interchangeably. So you're going to have your balance or your opening balance usually of your uh, allowance for uh, allowance for credit losses your balance is always going to be coming onto the side right but they love doing something uh let me just erase this quickly they love they love they love doing something with you guys and most of you get confused and this video is to just help you make sure that you don't get confused anymore uh the allowance for credit losses right And we agree that this is a T account, it has a credit side, it has a debit side. And we are saying the opening balance, for instance, in my example, was a thousand. Then they say to you in a question, it was agreed upon that uh, the allowance for credit losses has to be increased. It was agreed upon that the allowance for credit losses has to be increased by 500. It was agreed upon that the allowance for credit losses has to be increased to 1.5 okay let's use increased to 1.5 usually they use that okay when they say increased to the first thing that you have to understand is that we have a balance already right of a thousand if they say they're increasing it to 1.5 you now have to say 1.5 minus the thousand right and this is now going to give you a difference of 500 meaning we are have to increase our allowance by 500 rand how do we do that in the books of accounting you might ask Wonder. So what we then do, we go to our credit loss account, right? And remember, our credit loss account is a T account, right? And a T account it increases on the debit side, it decreases on the credit side. So when they increase an allowance, when they increase an allowance, we then take the five hundred, we put it on the debit side of credit losses, and the narration is going to be allowance. For credit losses right then from this side is going to then move remember accounting is double entry there's going to be a debit for every debit there's a credit credit there's a debit i have a video on that if you don't understand please go and watch that video then you take it this side then you write it now we are in the allowance for credit loss account then you write it here as uh it's coming from credit losses, of course, 500, right? How then do you balance this account? Balance this account, 1.5 this side. Then you come to this side, you put a 1.5. Then you say balance carried down of 1.5. So this 1.5 is going to move 1, 2, 3. You finish. So this is what happens when you are increasing your allowance for for credit losses then 20 
21. Then they discovered, then they discovered, pardon, then they discovered, ah, people are paying their debt. People are paying their debt on time. Right? So now we had a balance of 1.5. People are paying on time. So we have an opening balance of 21,000. So it's not really normal for us to keep it as high as this. Let's decrease it by 250. Okay? Let's decrease it by 250. So how are you going to record that decrease? You then come to your credit losses account. You then come to your credit losses T account. Right? Then remember we increase on this side, right? Then you now have to record the 250. Of the decrease this side is an allowance this uh 250 is then gonna come the side is credit loss then you have to balance your account which side is bigger 1.5 is bigger 1.5 is bigger 1.5 minus this, I'm left with 1.250. 1.250 becomes the balance in the balance carried down in this amount, and it's going to be this side for next month. But in this side, it's going to be 250. If in the year we also have debtors control, people who didn't pay, for instance, then we have to write off some debt. Debtors control for 100 is going to come to the side. If you have to now at the year and close off this account, how then do you go about it? You then have to take this amount and this amount and you have to put it where? How do you do it? You then have to uh, close everything off in what you call, what they call, what do you call it? The profit and loss account. So if you look at this account, which side is bigger? The bigger side is the credit side, right? Meaning you have to have 250 here. You're going to have to have 250 here. Right? 250, 250, 250. I'm going to get 150. Then I'm going to transfer this amount as my what do you call it into the profit or loss account then it's going to go down and wara wara on another day i'm going to tell you what to do with the profit velocity account but the closing part is not the reason for the video i didn't do this video to show you how to close off accounts i did the video so that i can show you where to record an increase where to record a decrease of credit losses our credit losses are going to increase or decrease how you go about it it's not so complicated but you just have to understand credit losses is an expense right expenses expenses most importantly expenses expenses don't forget this as long as you do accounting income and expenses are closed off at the end of a financial oh, my spelling. accounting period. Don't forget this. Right? They are closed off. Where are they closed off? In a profit or a loss account. Right? So at the end of the day, we have to know, did we make a profit? Did we make a loss? Should we continue business? What, are, what, are, what is the performance? That's where we use a statement. Of profit, loss, and other comprehensive income to check the performance of an entity so basically you have to just understand income and expenses are closed off that's why you see credit losses at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year is going to be blank then we have to put new things close it off allowance on the other end it's a negative asset it's not an income or expense that's why we have an opening balance at times okay and at the end, we have a balance brought down or a balance carried down, depending on which side is bigger, this one or this other one. But besides that, guys, thank you so much for your support. Remember, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you do. All the best examinations. Thank you.